Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today's video I wanted to discuss hard drives and specifically formatting hard drives like possibly an external one just like this guy. Let's do it. At some point, you're probably going to need an external hard drive, whether it be to back up your computer, which I highly recommend. And if you do want to back up your computer, there's a nice little utility called Time Machine. I'll link that down below. You can check out that video. Maybe you want to move content and archive it off of your computer to make room for new content. You want to just store files so that you can go from one computer to another. There's a variety of reasons of why to use an external hard drive. And whenever you do use an external hard drive, you always want to format it. And format it just means putting it into a language that the computer can understand and work with. We're gonna cover that process, getting a brand new hard drive, like let's say one of these extreme SanDisk Pros, or maybe you've gotten one of these uh, My Passport Western Digital. There's a whole ton of options out there. You might have a big G drive like this, or you have one of these Lacy drives, or one of these Lacy drives. As you can see, there's, you know, they add up over time and they tend to get smaller and smaller over the years. So let's go ahead, dive in. Let's learn how to format your hard drive. The thing is, whenever you purchase an external hard drive, no matter what your use is, you always want to format it to the language of your computer. So let's take this brand new hard drive right out of the box. We're going to plug it into the computer. It's going to mount on the desktop. If it doesn't show up here on the desktop, it could be because we've told it not to. If we went to Finder and chose Preferences and go to General, there's this option that says Show these items on desktop. If external disks is unchecked, it will not show up on your desktop. So I like to have this option checked. Another way to access it is if you go to the Finder and you scroll on the left-hand side, you will see under Locations, this is where external drives and network drives appear also. So here is that extreme SSD. Now there's a utility on the Mac called Disk Utility and Disk Utility allows us to format the drive so that it will work properly with the hardware that you have. So let's go ahead and open that up. So I'm gonna go to the Finder here. Let's go to Applications. I'm gonna scroll to Utilities and open up Disk Utility. Now let's move this over here. Disk utility, it looks a little intimidating, but let's keep it simple. I want this to be as easy as possible so that you feel comfortable with doing this. Depending on what operating system you have on the Mac, this might look slightly different, but you're going to have a lot of the same tools. I'm going to make things a little bit easier. I'm just going to say show only volumes here, and I can see that over here on the left hand side, it breaks it into internal, external, and disk images. We're just going to ignore disk images and we're just going to focus on internal and more specifically external. Now internal here, this is telling me or showing me information about the internal hard drive of this computer. So I can see different information about it. I can see how much space is used, the capacity. I mean, it gives me all the detailed information I could ever want for this hard drive. In the top right, there's a little info button that shows me even more detailed information. Do you have to know all this information? No. Honestly, unless you have a very specific need, it's just there if and when you need it. Our specific goal is to format this drive. Maybe I want to use this for a time machine backup. Maybe I want to use it to archive photos and videos. Maybe I want to use it as a means of moving files from one computer to another computer. So I'm going to choose Extreme SSD over here on the left hand side. Notice underneath here it says USB external physical volume XFAT. This is one of the languages that I'm going to reference of the different formats that we can have. So when I say formats, just think of them like different languages. Your hard drive talks to different computers and specifically your Windows computers and a Mac computer. And there's languages and formats only for Mac, there's languages and formats only for Windows, and then in between there's languages and formats so that you can use that hard drive for both Mac and Windows. So it's very, very important to ask yourself the question, what is your main goal with this external hard drive? Do you wanna use it purely only with a Mac? Do you wanna use it with a Windows computer? Or do you wanna use it with both? Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna select this hard drive 
and I'm gonna click on erase in the top right. And when I do that, it says, what do you wanna call it? And what do you wanna format it as? So here I have all of these different options, APFS, APFS encrypted, APFS case sensitive, Mac OS S journaled, MS-DOS, XFAT. So all of these different choices, and you may be asking, well, I don't know, what am I supposed to choose? For now, I'm gonna go ahead and choose APSFS. We'll keep it as extreme SSD and we'll click erase. Now, whenever you're erasing or formatting a hard drive, you're wiping all of the content off there. You're deleting everything. So if you have content on there, you might wanna put it someplace else before you actually erase it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and choose done here. I'm gonna link some articles that are very helpful that can tell you exactly what these formats do. So here they are. And this is where it breaks down the file system formats available in disk utility on a Mac. So the Apple file system is the APFSS, and this is designed for pretty much newer Macs, anything with a solid state hard drive. Mac OS S Extended is the previous language. Both of these are only for Mac. If you plug this hard drive into a Windows computer, you're not gonna be able to copy and use it as you normally would. So these are designed specifically just for your Mac. Now the other two are MS-DOS FAT and XFAT. I don't know where they come up with all these names, but just, just roll with it. But MS-DOS and XFAT, these file systems are compatible with Windows. Now I'm not gonna go through and read this whole thing. I'll link it down below so that you have it for reference, but just know that this gives you a more detailed information for what these actually do. So for example, when it gives me an option for encrypted or case sensitive, case sensitive, for example, is either homework or homework. Notice how homework is all in caps here, but homework here is not. So when you're searching a file on your computer, you have to be very, very specific if you've made it to be case sensitive. So let's actually do that. Let's go back to disk utility. If I were to take this hard drive again and click on erase in the top right, Notice I have the option for the Apple file system by itself, encrypted, case sensitive, or case sensitive encrypted. Now if you do encrypted, that just means that you're doing a password. So in order to use this hard drive, you're putting another layer of security so that you need a password to access the files on here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose cancel because I don't wanna do that. So my recommendation would be this. If you are only using this for your Mac and you have a relatively new Mac with a solid state hard drive, do the Apple file system, the APFS. If you need to use this hard drive for going back between Windows and Mac, then you can use the MS-DOS or the XFAT. Both of these are going to allow you to move files between those environments. If you plan on using this for a Time Machine backup, it's automatically going to format it for Mac OS Extended or the Apple file system. It's not going to do the MS-DOS or the XFAT. So just keep that in mind. If you're using this for a time machine and a, as a backup, you, you pretty much dedicate that hard drive to your Mac because you're not gonna be able to use it with your Windows computer at all. Anytime you wanna find out what format or what language these hard drives are in, if I didn't have disk utility up, I could select the hard drive on my desk and if I right click on it, I can say get info and this is gonna bring up the information for this drive and right below, it's going to show me the format that it is in the general tab here. So you can always tell what kind of file or what format the hard drive is. You can also select it here on the hard drive, go up to file, choose get info, and that does the same exact thing. Or you can go back to disk utility, select it on the left hand side here and go to info and it's gonna even bring up more info that shows the volume type is APFSS. Uh, other information down here, like is it a solid state drive? Yes it is, so on and so forth. I'm gonna click on this little button up here at the top that gives me options for the sidebar and I'm gonna say show all devices. Now when I do that, you'll notice that over here on the left hand side, it just opened up into a whole bunch of other options. Under the internal, it actually shows me that this is a PNY brand, one terabyte solid state drive. It's got a container and it contains the Mac and the Macintosh HD. And then I have external drive, which is that SanDisk and the container and the volume of Extreme SSD. Now, if I go back to the top level and I choose erase, notice it's saying, okay, what do you wanna erase and call this drive? 
Now notice we have a few other options. So not only can I name it, but it gives me the same format options, but it gives me the scheme option that honestly, you probably won't use that often, but it's important to know and understand of why it's there. And if you were to need it, you have an understanding of why. So the partition schemes are available are the GUID, 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 I think, GUI ID, I don't know, GUID partition map. And this is option for all Intel based Mac computers. The master boot record chooses this option for Windows partitions that will be formatted for MS-DOS and XFAT. And then Apple Partition Map chooses this option for compatibility with old PowerPC computers. So naturally, this takes it a step further because again, we have to define your goal and your need for this hard drive. But chances of you using this third option are very, very slim to none. The second option you might use if you do find yourself that you're going from a Windows to a Mac and you're not using this for time machine and you want to be in both environments, you could probably partition it and put it at this master boot record. But 99% of the time, if you're only using a Mac, stick with the GUID, whatever that is. Let's see what actually it is. I'm going to right click and do speech, start speaking. G-U-I-D. Oh, okay. G-U-I-D gonna spell it out for me instead of speaking the word that's cool too okay so I digress we're gonna keep it at that so I just wanted to let you know that's what these options are for now this is where we title it and I can say Joel's backup and we're gonna format it as APFS because that's the drive that I want and there's some benefits to that back in that article I'm gonna click erase here but back in that article here there's some really nice reasons that will go through here of why to do that. It features stronger encryption, space sharing, snapshots, faster directory sizing, and it just gives you some more abilities. Now, all of the other buttons across the top, we have this volume, first aid, partition, erase, restore, unmount, and info. Well, we saw the info before. This just shows us the detailed information about the particular hard drive that's selected. But let's take a look at some of these other ones. So we formatted this main hard drive as Joel's SSD and then we made it an APFS volume and it's 1000 gigabytes. So it's one giant bucket for this external hard drive. Now Disk Utility has some options where you can actually subcategorize or split this one giant bucket into smaller containers called partitions and volumes. Let's take a look at that and what it would be for and why you would want to do that. And in the top here, I'm gonna click on partition. Partition allows you to pretty much say, I wanna allocate 500 gigs here and 500 gigs here. And it's almost like they're two different rooms in a house. And it allows you to kind of separate your files in different ways. So here it's saying, okay, here's one big pie. I can click the plus sign and it says, hey, do you wanna add a volume or add a partition? We'll talk about volumes in a second, so let's go ahead and just choose add partition. Now also at any given point, if you want a more detailed explanation, if you ever forget, click the little question mark here and this is going to give you an example, more thorough answer about volumes versus partitions and containers and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna close out of this. We're gonna say add partition and notice here, it gives me this little visual graph to dedicate part of this hard drive and part of this hard drive. So notice this here, Joel's SSD, it's already formatted as APFS. Now I could change it if I wanted to, because again, I'm formatting it. So by doing this, I could change it to something else. But let's say I wanted to change this because maybe I'm using this hard drive between a Mac and a Windows computer. So I wanna dedicate this for Windows and we're gonna format it to MS-DOS. And we're gonna say, I want this to be 500. So we're gonna split it 500 and 500. So this is Mac side and this is Windows side. So I'm gonna choose apply here. And it's gonna say, hey, it's gonna partition. That means that it's going to add a Windows and the partition is going to be resized. So I'm gonna say, yes, that's fine. It's gonna go through his magic behind the scenes and it's going to go through and create two different partitions for us. All right, so that is done. Notice we have Windows SSD and W. Well, I guess it did not uh, take the W. Can we do Windows? There we go. So it took that 1000 gigabytes 
and it turned it into kind of two different uh, two different buckets. So this one hard drive now is partitioned into two different spaces. So if we get the information on here, go right click and choose get info. We can see that the format is MS-DOS. The capacity is 500 or 499. It's got available 499. Same thing on the Joel SSD 500 and it shows the available space there. I'll give you a practical example of why some people would do this, someone like me. I would actually take one of these hard drives and create different volumes on it so that I could put different Windows or different Mac operating systems over the years so that I can easily install software and have it dedicated for that operating system. So let's say that I want to install the past three or four Mac operating systems and I want to be able to troubleshoot that and be able to look at those options, I can partition this so that they're not all on one big bucket, but they're in their separate containers. So again, for the majority of people, are you going to be doing this? Probably not. You're just going to be formatting it. And the big takeaway is just knowing the format and your main goal. Format it once and you're good to go. Now, at any given time, I can undo what I did before. If I go back to partition, I can still select both of these. And if I wanted to reformat this, I could choose Mac OS journaled. I could dedicate a different hard drive space to it. I could add another partition. We could do three. So I could say this is going to be photos. This one is going to be videos. And this one is going to be picture or not pictures. Uh, we'll do music. And we'll change this to journaled. All of them are the same format, which is fine. And I could say apply. It's going to go through, reformat those other partitions. And I'm going to end up with three different partitions. One for videos, one for photos, and one for music. That way, when I plug this one hard drive in, I actually have three different containers to organize my files. And there we go. So we have videos, music, and photos all on one. And if we go to videos, it's got 250 gigs available, 250 here, and then 500 on the music. So that's how partitions work. It just gives you the ability to kind of split up your hard drive to a more manageable concept. So in the grand scheme of things, there's lots of ways that you can format and manipulate your hard drives depending on the purpose of what you're trying to accomplish. Your help menu for sure is your friend on this one because if you're not 100% sure, Go up to help, go to disk utility help, and then use the table of contents to look at what you're actually trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. And if you need a volume or a partition or what kind of format, and that will guide you in the right way and walk you through what you need to do. But overall, whenever you get a hard drive, just remember you always want to format it first. And this is a great tool to do that. So now let's say I just want to put this back to square one. I want to keep it simple. I just want this one hard drive that's formatted to use only with this Mac. I don't use a Windows computer. I don't need any fancy partitions, any fancy volumes. So we're going to select this external hard drive on the left. We're going to go up to erase. We're going to say Joel's SSD. We're going to leave it at APFS. GUID, guide, GUID, partition map. Choose erase. And we are going to be left with one single location for one single external hard drive. And there is that. The last few buttons up here at the top, we have a first aid. First aid allows you to just do a test to verify that your hard drive is good. So I have this selected on the, on the external hard drive. I'm going to choose run. And it's going to go through a series of tests just to make sure that the hard drive that I have plugged in is okay. You can do that with your internal one also. If I select the internal hard drive here, I can click on first aid, choose run, and it will go through those same tests. Depending on the hard drive that you have, if it's a, not a solid state drive, it may take a little bit longer to do. Let me actually take a step back. When I say solid state drive, I mean uh, a hard drive like this. Hard drives that are not solid state means that there's a, there's a little disc that spins in there really, really fast and you can often hear it. Those hard drives are a lot slower, but they're also a lot less expensive than solid state drives. So solid state drives, more expensive but more reliable and way faster than a traditional hard drive something like this western digital where this is a big bang for your buck but it's slower it's louder and 
there's more wear and tear on it. Solid states, definitely the way to go. So that's first aid. The last thing I wanna show you is kind of a fun tip. You know, you have all of these hard drives here and sometimes you can get a whole bunch of hard drives. I like to customize it as much as I can. So here's a little side tip for you. Whenever you have an external hard drive or even your hard drive here or really any folder, there's a way that you can actually customize the picture here, which is kind of fun. I have Ghostbusters on my mind for whatever reason. So we're gonna do Ghostbusters characters. And we're gonna do images. Oh, what's the green guy? Oh, let's do Marshmallow Man. Marshmallow, I like this picture right here. Okay, so we're gonna take this image I'm gonna drag it to the desktop and I'm gonna double click on it, open it up. And here we have the Marshmallow Man. So I'm gonna minimize our window here. So when I open this up, it's opening up in preview. And if I do a edit, select all, and then edit copy. If I go to my external hard drive here and go right click, do get info. If I click up here on the top, I can do edit, choose paste. I'm now pasting that little icon as my little external hard drive. So now I can move this picture to the trash. I can quit out of preview. And now I've just customized the icon of my external hard drive to Marshmallow Man. Fun tip, huh? So you can do that actually with any folder, any external hard drive. So if I eject this, right click on it and choose eject. If I take this here and I plug it back in, it's gonna have that nice little icon show up with my external hard drive. So, fun little tip there. Customize it, make it unique, make it yours. So that is formatting your hard drives. Very, very important. Make sure that when you format it, know that it's going to wipe everything off of there and really understand why you're formatting it in general. Usually out of the box, first thing that you do is to format your hard drive whenever you get a brand new one so that you can use it with the computer that you have. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that little like button. If you learned something, please hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.